boys and girls, welcome back. We are so excited you're joining us this weekend. We're gonna praise Jesus, we're gonna learn from the Bible, we're gonna sing, we're gonna shout, we're gonna learn our memory verse. It's gonna be awesome. All right, stand on up. Let's praise Jesus with our actions and our words. And today we are gonna watch the last part of our summer skit where maybe we'll find out if Queen Gwendolyn actually forgives King Cartwright. Are you guys excited to watch it? Cause I am. Let's go watch it together. Oh, yeah. Oh. Were these uh, things really necessary? Mm, well, in fashion, you never ask what is necessary, only what looks good, and <laughs> between you and me, I look. I look good. <laughs> Paul, I hope you look ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculously good. Oh, oh, not worth the argument. Okay, let's make sure we have everything <clears throat> we need. Um, okay. Yeah. okay, so we need uh, uh, fruit. Oh, uh, fruit, yep, fruit, check. Okay, we need, uh, that's it. Yeah, oh, we're good, wait, no, let's go. One more thing, one more thing. What, what Ready do we for possibly this? need? Drum roll, please. Ta-da! Oh. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, I think you look like a raccoon. Yeah, a raccoon who knows how to throw some fruit. <laughs> you look even more ridiculous than before. I didn't think that was possible. Oh, come on. Well, well, uh, but I got Tom Ford to make one for you too. Uh, well, it is blue. Yeah, go on, go on. Blue is my favorite color. I'll, I'll try it. Okay. No, I don't like it. Come on, look, no. look. Hey. Oh, yeah. Bears this king. All right. I stand before you today, a king in desperate need of your forgiveness. Booze and slow clap. A king has a responsibility to his people, and I have neglected my responsibility to you, my people. What do you say? With the help of my trusted advisor. I can see now that I've been a selfish, prideful king. Don't forget cowardly! Small laughter. Who said that? But yes, I've also been a coward and I've failed to protect our friends here. 
Highness, a, a wise king recognizes his faults and limitations and surrounds himself with experts to advise him when the time is necessary. And I must thank you for your patience with me. And that's why I would like to invite all of you to our new fairgrounds where a grand announcement awaits. This is where I take my stand. Nothing I have seen suggests a desire for you to help your people. Queen Gwendolyn, if you would be so kind as to accompany me to the fairgrounds, I promise it will be worth it. A king's actions should always imitate God. His mercy and forgiveness should be above his works. So, does that mean you'll come? Yes. All right, this way to the fairgrounds. For surely a king is first a man, and so it follows that a king must do as all men do, the best he can. And I have not done my best for you. I've been selfish. Yeah! And prideful. Yeah! And I, I haven't treated you or our dear friends with the respect and the kindness you deserve. Yeah! So, today, these fairgrounds on which we stand will no longer host our jousting tournaments. Thus, henceforth, they will be known as King Cartwright's Communal Kitchen. A king should not feast while his people starve. Yeah! Mr. Tom Ford will no longer serve as my royal tailor, as I have sold all his wonderful outfits. That money will be returned to Queen Gwendolyn and to you, my people. Yeah! Yeah! Oh, Get down! It's another fresh fruit attack! Does anybody have anything? Highness! Ouch! Your Highness, that was so selfless of you. You protected us. I'm just trying to be a better king. People of Abbotsview, it is clear to me now that I have not been a good king to you or a good friend to Queen Gwendolyn, even though she's been nothing but kind to me. I'm reminded of the example of Jesus Christ, who came to earth not so that we could serve him, but so that he could serve us. And it is his example that I seek to follow. Jesus Christ offers us new life in him, and I hope you will offer me the chance to be a better king to you. Yes. We forgive you, King Cartwright! Well, that was exciting! I'm good. How are you? So happy to be here! Now, Mel, I have heard from our friend that you have been telling a lot of stories this summer. Yep! And I was thinking to myself, how do you have all of these stories in your brain? Well, I live a very, very full and fun life! So I came here so excited to listen to another story. So I was really hoping that you have one for me. Uh, oh, you're kind of putting me on the spot. But uh, let me think about it. OK, I got one. Awesome. This is kind of crazy, though. I'm so excited to hear it. OK, so um, as you may know, I have curly hair. No, you yeah. have straight hair. Well, I straighten it every morning. What? Yeah. So one morning, I was straightening my hair, and I burned off that piece in the back. Oh, no. Oh, no, Melman. Oh, I know. So what did you do? Well, I called up my hairdresser, and she was like, hey. I was like, can I come in? I have a hair emergency. And she was like, yeah. So I hopped on my tricycle. And away I went. And did she help you? She fixed my hair emergency by giving me a perm so my hair would always be straight. She transformed my hair. That is so cool, Mel. I love your hair. Thank you. But this kind of has to do with our big idea for today. 
Really? Yeah. Our big idea for today is that Jesus transforms our life. Wow! So just like the hair lady transformed your hair no. from curly to straight, uh -huh. Jesus transforms our life as well. Wow! Before Jesus saved us, we were enemies of Jesus. And we sin a lot. Oh, yeah. But Jesus saved us, and now we get to be in his family. And we get to be friends with Jesus. Wow. And our hearts are clean. That is super cool. And in today's Bible story, yeah. we are going to learn about how Jesus transformed the life of Paul. Of Paul? A guy in the Bible. Oh! Are we ready to listen to the whole story? Oh, yes. Should we watch it? Yep. Let's go. Hello boys and girls, Pastor Crystal here. Thank you for joining us for our last day of day camp. But it's not our last day to spend in God's Word. Yesterday, we learned about how Jesus was a different type of king. I would have thought he lived in a castle with the biggest crown, a limousine, and all the best toys. But instead, he came as a tiny little baby who turned in to be a great man, who dies on the cross for you and for me. He died the worst death, but he did that because he loves us that much. We learned that he was put in a tomb and you would think that would be the end. He died, but we know that's not where our story ends. There are still great things to come. Have you ever played with a jack-in-the-box? You know those little toys you wind up? When my oldest son was very little, he loved the jack-in-the-box. He actually had a Curious George one. He would get this really stunned look on his face, and then he would laugh and he'd laugh and laugh. He just loved the jack-in-the-box. This reminds me a little bit of our Bible story today, where there is a very special surprise as well. Okay, let's dive into our Bible lesson today. After Jesus was crucified, he was put in a tomb. Two women went to see him. Can you guess what they found? He wasn't there. The stone was rolled away. The tomb was empty. When they were there, two men suddenly appeared. Can you imagine how surprised they would have felt? I think they would have been amazed and then really, really scared. What do you think? The man said to her, why are you looking for the living among the dead? What does that mean? It means that Jesus was alive. The woman suddenly remembered what Jesus said. He had told them he would die and then after three days, rise again. They were so excited, they ran back to the disciples to tell them what had happened. Okay, I want to read part of the story to you. A little bit of the part of the Bible. There's so many good details in it. I just don't want to miss anything. Can you make sure you sit down, get comfy, and here we go. After this, two of Jesus' followers were wa walking along the road that led to a town called Emmaus. They were sad and were talking about what happened to Jesus. Suddenly, Jesus joined the disciples and walked along with them, but they didn't know who he was because God kept them from recognizing him. You seem to be having a very serious discussion. What are you talking about, Jesus asked them. One of the men answered, you must be the only person in Jerusalem that doesn't know what hap has happened in the last few days. Then they told them about how Jesus had been crucified and how he'd been buried and that some woman had gone to the tomb. But the tomb was empty. We have heard that he is alive, they said, but we have not seen him. Do you find it difficult to believe what was written by the prophets in the scripture, Jesus said? It was predicted by the prophets that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his time of glory. 
Then Jesus quoted passages from the writings of the prophets, explaining what the scriptures said about himself. By this time, they had come to Emmaus, and the disciples invited Jesus to stay with them since it was getting too late to travel. So Jesus stayed with them, and when they sat down to eat, Jesus took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. Suddenly, their eyes were opened. They knew it was Jesus. Then just as quickly as he appeared to them, Jesus disappeared. They were so happy and excited to have seen Jesus, they ran back to Jerusalem to tell the others that they had seen Jesus. Jesus stayed on earth for 40 days after his resurrection, and then he returned to heaven. Jesus might not be here right now because we know he's in heaven. So what does that mean for you, for me? I think we might need to spend a little bit of time talking about that. There's a great example in the Bible for us. His name was Paul. Let's look a little bit at what his life looks like. Before Paul became a Christian, he was a really proud man. He was a Jew, one of God's chosen people. He was of the family of Benjamin. He was a great Pharisee, meaning he knew all about God's law and obeying it. Some people thought Paul was a great man, even though he was teasing and hurting the Christians. They thought Paul knew everything. They thought he had it all. But once Paul had a relationship with Jesus, he realized all that other stuff was worth nothing. It was not important. What he had done was wrong. What Paul wanted more than the other stuff was to know Christ, to grow in his relationship with Jesus. He knew that was the most important of all. Paul's relationship with Jesus was the most important thing to him. He wanted to be more and more like Jesus. He knew the way he could become more like Jesus was by spending time with him, getting to know him. When we love Jesus with all our hearts, we want to be more like him. So how do you think we do that? Well, it's by spending time with him, talking to him, and reading his words out of the Bible are some of the best ways we can do that. Spending time with Jesus is one of the most important things that we can do for our relationship with him. To become more like Jesus. This reminds me of our Bible verse. It's from Philippians 3, 20 to 21. But we are citizens of heaven, and we can hardly wait for a savior from there. He is the Lord Jesus Christ. He has the power to bring everything under his control. By his power, he will change our earthly bodies. They will become more like his glorious body. Paul uses the example of a race to show what it looks like to live for Jesus. Do we just get up and run the race? No. We train for it. We eat certain foods. We don't eat lots of junk food. We have to spend time exercising. Sometimes we don't even do some of the other things that we love because we're busy training for the race. Our goal as Christians is to spend forever with Jesus. This is what we are racing towards. But how do we train for that? We do it by spending time with God, learning more about Him, spending time talking to Him, praying, we do it by listening and obeying what God's word says. Another way we can get ready for the race is by telling others about Jesus and how great he is, how he loves them, and how he wants a relationship with them as well. Sometimes we're going to have great moments. Sometimes they're going to be sad. Sometimes we're going to be angry. But through all of that, we need to remember what our goal is. We get to spend forever with Jesus in heaven. 
Now that is going to be a great day. I'm so excited for the day that we stand before Jesus, where I stand before Jesus, and he says, well done, good and faithful servant. I'm so excited to be where there's no more crying, no more pain, no more anger. Oh man, that is going to be the best day. Do you want that as well? Do you want to run the race, the best race of all? When you tell Jesus how much you love him, you ask him for his forgiveness, you begin a lifelong race towards the day that you get to be with him forever. Well, that is all I have for you today at day camp. We have loved spending this week with you. I have loved being able to teach you from God's word. But just remember, just because camp is over, that doesn't mean the race is over. Remember to always have Jesus as number one in your heart and your mind. And remember to spend time with him. All right, we love you. Stay safe and see you later. Following Jesus is my great adventure. Following Jesus means I'll put him first. He is the light guiding me through the darkness. Following Jesus, the hope of the world. Following Jesus is tricks on me lately and I can't seem to find him. Oh! Word bird, you scared me. Oh, you always playing tricks on me. But are you here to say the memory verse with me? Yeah? Are you ready? Perfect. I'm gonna say them. Are you gonna repeat them after me? Yeah? And boys and girls, are you gonna repeat them with Word Bird? Perfect. Let's do it together. But we are citizens of heaven. And we can hardly wait for a savior from there. He is the Lord Jesus Christ. He has the power to bring everything under his control. By his power, he will change our earthly bodies. They will become like his glorious body. Philippians 3, verse 20 to 21. Good 
Good job, word bird. You ready to do it again? You're not gonna scare me this time? Okay, let's do it again together. But we are citizens of heaven, and we can hardly wait for a savior from there. He is the Lord Jesus Christ. He has the power to bring everything under his control. By his power, he will change our earthly bodies. They will become like his glorious body. Philippians 3, verse 20 to 21. Good job, Word Bird. Yay, a little celebratory dance. We did it. I'm so glad that we got to spend time in the Word, talking about spending forever with Jesus. When we have relationship with Him, we get to spend forever with Him in heaven. All right, guys, it's been amazing to be with you this summer, to be able to learn from God's Word, to be able to sing, shout, learn from our friends in our skit. It's been a great time, and especially seeing Melman. All right, let me pray for you. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and talk to Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you for a strange, well, wonderful summer. Thank you that you love us and you care for us, that you died on the cross, you rose again, and when we have relationship with you, we get to be with you in forever in heaven. I pray that you watch over these kids. Will you keep them healthy and strong? Will you keep them safe until we see them next week? In your holy and precious name we pray, amen. All right, guys. 
Thanks for praying with me. Make sure you take some time with your family to do the discussion questions. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.